Yo, yo, yo. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening out there. Super pumped to have you joining us. This is episode 29 of the Collected and Connected podcast uh, with our guests. Wonderful, beautiful, the most beautiful guests, the most beautiful hosts in the whole entire world. Uh, three ball 34. How you doing out there, buddy? What up? What up? Doing good, King Brett. Thanks for having me, buddy. Nice. I love that hoodie you got on there. You're going to have to talk about that a little later. Yes, um, sir. The most handsome of us all, Sir Glenn. How are you? I'm doing pretty good. Oh, that's, how are you doing? That's, that's very good. I'm doing very good, too. Thank you. G Wagon, Glenjamin. What up? Hey, Glenjamin. Yo, yo, what's hanging? Very good. I'm, uh, I'm King Brett. Hello. I love Queso. Um, now that that's over, the man, the myth, Mr. Redirected Panda, our special guest. Noah, how are you, man? Thanks for joining us. Doing well, doing well. Thanks for having me on. It's a, it's a pleasure to be here, finally. It's, it's, it's really an honor to be on the podcast. I've been uh, following for a long time, been a part of Collecting and Connecting for, I think, since the start. So happy to finally be on. Dude, so pumped to have you. Another beautiful bearded uh, brother joining us. Uh, we know we can't go wrong. <laughs> OG, uh, OG in the house, Noah. Heck yeah, yeah man. One of the original uh, CNC members. Love it, man. Yeah, I think I got like the number three or number four of the float. The original. Uh, I that's, what, that's what I'm talking about. If you yeah. don't know, uh, we, we did uh, minted floats uh, in back in November, December of uh, 2022. Wow. Yeah. And uh, wow. now it's 2024. Uh, the new year is in. And uh, we got Noah in the house. King Brett, Glenn, this is fun. CNC, baby. Let's go. Let's talk about some Spurs. Yeah. Who's Spurs? Who's that? Like the, like, it's what? That's another What's Texas Spurs? team you guys aren't aware of. Uh, Noah, a.k.a. Redirected Panda, is a monster Spurs fan. We're definitely going to talk. Uh, oh I think they got a player named uh, Wimben Yama, some, something like that. That's a new yeah. rookie that's pretty hot. Yeah. Uh, he's yeah. in the ro yeah. rookie yeah. collecting yeah. like we are. Yeah. Big on rookies, big on Spurs. I don't have a big budget these days, so you gotta you gotta be really specific on what you what you collect. So. Jeez, I hear that. Yeah, that's a great point. Just as for all of our strategies are kind of evolving and changing, not only with the platform and uh, what they have going on and what they're introducing to us, but budget comes into to mind and uh, just time on the platform. You start finding things that you really want to go after. Uh, certain passions, if you have a, a team that you're you're on as well as little niches uh, uh, within it. So tell us a little bit about your background on the platform. When did you start? Um, tell us about uh, joining CNC, et cetera. For sure. Yeah. I mean, I got back on, ooh, right? I started on Top Shot, I think January 2021. Oh, gee. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, my, uh, my brother got me on. He's, you know, he's telling me about it. He's saying he's making some money opening packs and you know kind of same story i've heard from a lot of people on here you get on open your first pack and you're hooked um yeah i mean at the time though i mean i was getting ready to start grad school was working part you know i'm young you know don't have a ton of money sitting around to be buying buying nfts so it was just a little bit at a time first but then i got uh i got real lucky on one of those early series two legendary drops and like hopped the line somehow Ooh. um like yeah. back uh yeah, back, back, I think it was the first time they they tried to do a queue. <laughs> oh, it was and it, it like it messed up, and I jumped the jumped the queue. So while everybody else else was in the line, I was like buying a pack. And I remember art. Yeah, if you weren't bad. around in 2021, like this OG, and some of us came in right after him, uh, the queues were a uh, <laughs> uh, craziness in themselves. Man, they were uh, they were constantly being paused, canceled, postponed. Yeah. Yeah, uh, people were jumping. Okay. There was all kinds of stuff happening back in 2021. Yeah. It was chaos. Oh, well, it, it was wild. I mean, back when I first joined, it was like there was no schedule to drop. I mean, they started to say, "All right, we'll we'll say 24 hours there'll be a drop." Yeah, but it was just they just put it up. And so at the time, I'd be up. Uh, I mean, I had nothing to do at the time. I think it was like right after here in uh, San Antonio or in Texas, we had that ice storm. Oh yeah, there wasn't much going on. So I think I'd stayed up like I knew there was going to be a legendary drop. So I'd been up most of the night, and I just <laughs> like I was like clicking the re refresh page like every like five minutes, 
And Glenn, Glenn I know uh, up there in New York, you guys are used to it with the uh, uh, the snow, ice, cold weather uh, up there in the Northeast. Uh, here in Texas, we don't know how to handle that driving no. at, at no. all. We just shut down the city as soon as stuff like that happens. <laughs> yeah, I heard about that. <laughs> yeah, it was like, what, two weeks straight where there's like nothing. Everything yeah. was closed. Everything was shut down. So, uh, But yeah, I mean, that's kind of when I dove into Top Shot and had nothing going on. And so just all day looking at stuff. But got lucky, got that legendary drop, and then uh, was able to like. Do you remember who you pulled in that legendary drop? Oh yeah, uh, Andre Drummond. And uh, wow. Wow. If there's one guy you want to pull. It's Andre Drummond, right? Well, still a Lego. That's still yeah, bad. Yeah. Then every moment was still an amazing moment. It yeah, was yeah. any Lego at that point was probably a pretty uh, uh, awesome. Yeah. Pull. Yeah, I yeah. think I times three it on the resale and then, then put it back into some uh, run it backs. And then that was right before everything just like took off. And so oh, at that so point, funny. I mean, I uh, I rode it to the top, rode it all the way back down. Uh, but I mean, that's what got me hooked. So I've been in it since then and kind of with everybody kind of been adjusting to the, the new market and uh, kind of figuring out the, the best way to do it without losing all my money and uh, still enjoying it. So, <laughs> yeah. What do you think about Fast Break? I've been liking it so far. Uh, I uh, because I, I shifted my kind of strategy to you know I don't really have the big bucks for like hardcore legendary collecting and rare. So uh, common rookies going for de debuts and spurs. So because of that, I don't have a ton of like rares and legendaries to really be like. Yeah. I got my four, I got four wins straight, and since then I've been uh, I've been missing. So. I just don't have the players anymore. It's definitely tough, especially when you get deeper into it. Um, if yeah. you aren't playing yet, I know it's kind of a, a closed uh, a game right now for, for certain people. If you're in the NLL or you asked before in December, then you've been uh, let in to the fast break and you're able to play. Um, if you have a common moment, you can only play that, that player one time uh, during the 15 days of fast break. So once you use them, uh, you've already used them and can't use them again. So uh, hence people buying rares and legendaries now because you get multiple uses out of that player. Uh, so very uh, cool to see purchases happening because of Fast Break, because of the gamification. Uh, but we're also getting utility out of our collections. You're, you're able to use those uh, right now for a game uh, to try to win prizes. I like it. Yeah. yeah. I've just been liking anything that gets me coming back and, you know, I can use my moments even though I've been – I've been kind of stuck in these last few weeks. So, what about you, Glenn? Yeah, How's fast it, break been for you? I absolutely love it. Um, true story about, <laughs> about the summer, not true. Not true. <laughs> the summer of 2022, I guess it was. Uh, I was buying up rares of approximately the top 70 to 75 players. I was moving my collection around and putting more money in because I really wanted them for, you know, like moment ranks. And I was buying, you know, the assists and the steals and all that stuff instead of the dunks. So I kind of had uh, 90, 90 to 95% sitting in my collection already. A lot Ooh. of them are, um, you know, S3, uh, MGLEs or whatnot. But I'm finally able to use That's it, sweet. which is awesome. So I have, you know, like the, I even had doubles of a few because there was video game numbers, which I collected. Uh, so I'm getting rid of some of mine and trying to buy other ones. And I'm doing trades. I traded with Chewy recently for, for a moment. So... Uh, I'm set up pretty good, and I also bought a few legendaries because I had some money sitting around. Not too many, but I have some. Lego. That's yeah. what I'm about. I'll say on behalf of Noah Three by myself, if you have any duplicates that you just need to like get rid of, obviously <laughs> we would help you. We would be honored to help you in that endeavor to clean up your uh, portfolio. There, King King yeah. Brett's open to receiving any gifts if you guys are down. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> queso, flowers, chocolate, an ant mound. Uh, you know, fish tank, any of it. So, King Brad, I want to set uh, Noah up here. Uh, he's uh -oh. got a pretty crazy story. Me and you have bragged a lot or bragged or complained about funny places we've been in pack drops. Uh, we yeah, were yeah. trying to get to a drop. Uh, we were out in the middle of the woods uh, hunting hogs in East Texas and uh, couldn't find Ooh. internet anywhere trying to get in a drop and, and get in the queue. Um, <laughs> and uh, I was talking to Noah and he told me a pretty crazy story of trying to get in a queue one time and uh, had some coworkers looking at him funny. Tell us a little bit about what that story, buddy. Dude, yeah. yeah, I think it's the story I told you about when I was a, a scribe, right? I think, mm -hmm. I think yeah. yeah. So I, I was working as a medical scribe uh, right before I got into grad school and 
If we're uh, idiots, what's a medical scribe? Oh uh, yeah, so a medical scribe is somebody who just uh, sits and documents what the doctor does during said visit or procedure or whatever. So he doesn't have to actually do any of the typing or hard work. I just you know the scribe just, just and does it all for him. I feel like I politely just got called an idiot by three ball. I think we all did. For so, Brett and everybody else out there. What's, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, yeah, I didn't even know what it was until I got the job. And my stepsister kind of helped me out with it. So it was – that is what it I is. love it. So you, yeah, got a a brother, get, you got a brother getting you into Top Shot, uh, a yeah. sister getting you uh, into medical school. Man, you got family hooking you up. Mm -hmm. I love connections, yeah, yeah. No, but so not a typical medical scribe. I was in – like they do these vascular procedures where they like – People have uh, diabetes or peripheral vascular disease, and they clean out their arteries and their legs. And yeah. so I'm in there, and I'm just documenting what they do. But there can be times when they're, like, trying to run this wire down where it can take, like, 30 minutes, 45 minutes, where there's just nothing going on. I'm just, like, chilling there in the corner with nothing to do. Still um, running wire. Still running yeah. wire. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, but, it, you know, I thought it was only going to take 30 minutes. So I was like, okay, while we transition, I'm going to hop in on the queue, you know, hop in on the <laughs> Uh, but then uh, the procedure is going long and so i just decided i'm like look they don't need me i've never done this before but i think i'm just gonna walk out and go uh and go <laughs> well because you know you can walk out and use the bathroom nobody questions it but uh yeah. this time yeah so i went out there and i like pull up my laptop and i start joining because i didn't have my phone at the time I forget. uh and so uh the other scribe comes to me like what are you doing like why Taking a break for pack drop. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, and he, he uh, eventually they're like, hey, you got to get back in because this other scribe was training me. So she was like telling me I had to be back in there. <laughs> and so I, I was like, I'm, I'm almost done. She's like, uh, yeah, you can just bring your laptop. So <laughs> just put oh. my laptop in there. And I was like on my leg, running, you know, because you had to do like the two factor authentication, you know. So it took yeah. <laughs> So I was like in there trying to two factor uh, and the. Uh, Afterwards, the doctor was like, "What are you doing?" He, I was like, uh, "I had to, I had to join something real quick. I, I, I didn't explain what it was, but uh, yeah. the, uh, it was all cool till somebody asked you to explain what you were doing, and you're like, <laughs> um, trying to explain NFTs and Top Shot real quick. Kind of yeah. a long story. He's like, "No way! That's what I've been doing on my phone while I was doing this whole surgery. <laughs> That's what I, I, I'm number eight in Q, bro. He had priority <laughs> access." Yeah, what your doctor's and medical facility really does while you're under anesthesia. Yeah, actually, and the anesthesia uh, anesthesiologist actually would always be chilling on his phone doing something. So, See? yeah, <laughs> I knew I liked them. Yeah, yeah, I think it was the uh, Run It Back um, series three, uh, the one with the first one with Shaq. Ooh, and Iverson. Is that the one? Yeah, yeah. I think that was S two. Was that S two cool. there? Yeah. I think so. Towards the yeah. end of S two. Uh, Very cool story. Yeah, that that beats ours out. Uh, being in the uh, as a medical scribe working with the doctor, I'm gonna have to step out for a minute. Yeah. That's you you awesome. know people are in the queue in the bathroom. Come on, everyone's oh, on the everyone. can in the queue. I bet there's some crazy stories from 2021. Uh, uh, people get being in all different types of weird places uh, trying to uh, trying to get in there. But when I heard that, I knew we had to bring that up on the show. I yeah. thought that was hilarious. Yeah, that's pretty funny. Um, definitely want to talk our usual uh, staples. We got Sticky Icky Wicky coming. We got Name That Player. And then we got your favorite basketball memory. But we, uh, we definitely got to talk Spurs. Uh, Victor Wimbiyama has been the story of the of the year. Uh, series 23-24. Everybody was pumped about the rookie debut set coming back and him being the, the cover of it. Um, I think there was nervousness about how he was going to uh, – take into the league uh being that lanky being that tall uh how do you think it's been so far yeah i mean i've been i've been nothing but impressed i know there's been a lot of people that are a lot of spurs fans have come, come out of the woods recently and then all you hear is all that happens yeah <laughs> there's never haters online i don't i don't i don't i don't know what you mean yeah yeah, I mean, but for most of what I've seen, most of the hate really isn't directed at Wimby. I feel like the way he's playing is kind of shutting up anybody that's potentially saying that he's not good. I mean, it's hard to watch him and yeah. not be just like – He's been smooth. Oh, man. He's, yeah. He can do stuff that, I mean, nobody else can do at that size. Like, it's really impressive. Yeah, I think that play recently, that highlight where he, uh, what, like, took off from the three-point line, like, one dribbled from the half court and, like, put it over his head yeah. and, like uh, – <laughs> <laughs> Layer, uh, 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 not NBA Jam. Um, 
Uh, he did the Space Jam, uh, basically oh, yeah. reach for the <laughs> for yeah. the rim. There's, I mean, I think I watched that highlight like 30 times, like just like blown away. Like, what? What did you just do? How do you? How do you and I think uh, we're going to have so many moments uh, like that throughout his career just because he's he's a, an alien. He's doing stuff that we've never seen before at that height. We called Chris Stops a unicorn. That's definitely what this guy looks like because, I mean, he Chris can Stops. shoot it, put it on the uh, floor, going by people, and, of course, finishing at the rim. I like to see him blocking and uh, defending as well. So. Yeah, that's the thing. Normally you see a guy that that's that tall and it's like, oh, he looks kind of awkward. You know, he looks like he, he might not – maybe shouldn't be playing basketball or something. But there's really nothing about Wimby's game that's that doesn't look smooth or, or right. So, I mean, Wimby obviously is great. People are just hating on the team, hating on Pop. Um, but honestly, I mean, I, I've, loved it. I've been loving it so far. I didn't really expect us to come out winning to – try to make it to the playoffs so i think we're we're in good shape i think pop's still trying to train the guys probably trying to pull a couple more first round picks out of it um mm -hmm. and, and set us up for like a you know five to eight year timeline before we start being really competitive i mean really the way it is with the league right now there's too many really good teams to really have a chance at 100 percent. so and um, with the way injuries have been it takes one player being injured for the best team and it's just it's done you have to have everyone healthy everyone firing on all cylinders king brett we've uh we've seen a similar path uh, of what he's talking about about the spurs of what we've done with the maps we got luca similarly uh similarly from overseas and was already playing pro ball and already kind of going but uh, hadn't really adjusted to the nba and uh he did do some really cool stuff his first year and and has uh since and has been improving uh, year and year but we didn't expect him to win the whole thing you know uh his rookie season uh, yeah. and, and each year we get closer and closer. So it's been fun to watch that, um, uh, him growing up in the league for sure. I can't believe he's that young. He's 24. Uh, the league's getting so much younger. It is. It's yeah. just like Benjamin. I'm going backwards. I'm like Benjamin Button. Every, every episode I get younger. <laughs> Benjamin Button. <laughs> um, no, I have a question though. I, so I, I, the Spurs are kind of one of those teams that i that I root for, even though I'm a big Knicks fan, you know, there's a couple other teams that you like to see succeed yeah. and they have a decent amount of talent. They've had some high draft picks lately. Um, I feel like their, their record is worse than I would expect them to be based on the talent they do have and the coaching they have. Ooh. What do you think is the, you know, the reason behind that or, or, or whatnot? Glenn's turning the heat up. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I'd say, honestly, I, I haven't watched, a ton of, I mean, these, this last end year, I haven't been able to have the time to watch a ton of like games live. I'll mo mostly just be watching highlights. Um, but in terms of what I see, it doesn't look like they're really making a big effort to like win. I mean, mm -hmm. Vassal was not getting a ton of minutes and he's like a big part of the offense. I mean, obviously they were experimenting with Sohan at point. Uh, so I don't think they were really trying to be very optimal. It seemed like they were just trying to give their young guys a good place to grow, learn, make mistakes. So. Ooh. That, that would be my guess. I mean, because I'm the same way. Like, I watched some of those first few games, like when they beat the Suns, uh, those two games in a row. I was like, oh, man, this could be a great season. But then they just kind of fallen apart since then. And uh, I couldn't agree more. I think that yeah. that's what you hit the nail on the head of, of people being mad online, that they weren't mad at Wimby. They're more mad at uh, Popovich and how things are going. They're expecting to win right away. And I think Popovich is taking his time with the young guy, and he's – uh, him and several other players uh, kind of bringing them along and putting them in tougher situations and, and helping them uh, learn. But we have seen bright spots, like you mentioned, against the Suns. They've had some really good games on national TV where they've uh, battled, and I, I think they are getting better. So I think it's just a, a time, just a little process. Well, yeah. it's like, would you rather your team figure stuff out at the beginning of the year and try a bunch of new stuff and kind of figure out what works? Or would you rather just play the same players and not change anything and at the end of the year, if it's not working, be like, oh, crap. All right, let's change everything. So, like, like uh, just adding on to what you said, I think mm -hmm. they're trying a lot of new stuff to see who meshes well, who works well, who can pass the ball, who can do what to figure it out now so that way they can grow that by the time they lose to the Mavericks, um, you know, in the playoffs. Yeah. It'd be great. Well, to be fair, they're losing to everybody right now. To be fair. <laughs> there it is again. So, uh uh, Glenn, a uh, great point yeah. bringing up um, uh, Spurs. I want to talk about how I interacted with uh, Redirected Panda uh, here before. Uh, uh, Noah 
he uh, was doing some really cool stuff online, but he was definitely a part of Top Shot Spurs. Uh, uh, TSS yeah. uh, Spurs, man, has been uh, a really cool community. Um, you mentioned that you, Glenn, that you like another team, that you kind of follow the Spurs as somebody secondary to the uh, Knicks. Uh, the mm -hmm. same thing for King Brett and I is that we share a state, you know, with the Spurs as well as the Rockets. So it was easy for us hey. to support other texas teams um they share a state with us to be fair but yeah continue, continue. and uh, uh great correction and i noticed uh, early on when we were joining the mavs yeah. and, and uh trying to finish team sets that the spurs were burning moments they were doing such cool stuff in the community yeah. that other people weren't doing um I, I clicked through their twitter accounts and started finding people ginobili soros and uh, uh and uh, uncle drew and different people that are um uh captains and doing a lot of cool things and they had a community member who had started a site and was selling merch uh to the spurs and that was a uh company uh or an online account called three token that redirected that noah started um really cool thing he was making merch like this uh top shot spurs sweatshirt that i won in the giveaway wow. and, yes sir and cool. um he uh, started making waves with the Spurs. We definitely noticed him do that. And uh, I want to give him a minute to talk about it. But we, we saw him uh, jump on the Mavericks and, and join the Mavericks and started doing community merch for them, uh, as well as several other uh, groups. Talk a little bit about that, uh, Noah. Yeah, for sure. So a lot of that came. <clears throat> so I've, these last few years, I've been doing my uh, a graduate program that's been like a hybrid online. So I've been home a fair amount. Uh, so during that time, being home on my computer, when I was taking my breaks from studying and so forth, I'd find different things to spend my time on. And so one of that was kind of figuring out how to set up uh, a merch store, like on-demand yeah. printing through Shopify. And so I kind of figured it out initially to try to give my wife a way to like sell her art and stuff. But then I realized I was like, oh man, I learned how to build a store and she didn't really have the time to to use it but then i was like oh man like people have been asking for merch like in the top shot communities like i got a super easy way oh, wow. that, that i could make this happen like that so i started to reach out to people and just try to uh, like reach out to all the team captains and say hey like i can set up a really cheap deal for you guys like won't cost y'all anything and can start to generate some money for the communities to kind of give back and at the same time give people merch that they've been asking for so that was kind of the idea is hey it's you know i figured out how to set one up it's not too complicated want to try to uh, give access to the community to give uh, give merch since I know everybody was asking for that. So that's kind of where the idea came from. And uh, yeah, like you said, uh, Top Shot Spurs, uh, Mavericks, uh, then uh, Sam D uh, with the, oh yeah. Yeah, that, that's another reason I love watching the podcast is the three token merch is everywhere. I'm always like, everywhere, everywhere. Every screen. <laughs> But, uh, that's very cool. I, I definitely picked up on that early on and really liked that you were helping communities out. Uh, you hit the nail on the head that back then uh, collectors wanted merch and still collectors want merch. They're hungry to be able to rep their teams, communities uh, uh, out in the wild. I think it's uh, cool to be able to show something hard copy to represent the community you're representing. So very, very cool that you were doing that and I uh, really appreciate all your hard work on there. Um, I, I remember when I reached out, <clears throat> we were talking about Mavericks. You're like, uh, who are you? Uh, you're not a captain. I was like, well, technically I'm like the third man, the uh, assistant to the assistant to the assistant captain. And he's like, cool. I need to hear from the captain. I was like, okay, they're going to call me to say to talk to you, to talk to you, to talk to them, to talk to me. I'm the assistant to the regional manager. Let's yeah. just cut out the middleman. Gosh, I'm so glad I set that up and someone just knocked it out of the park. Sick office reference. Oh, man. Nice. It was so much fun. And then you created the most awesome stuff. It was so great. Yeah, you've done a great job uh, with the CNC merch uh, uh, that we see on King Brett's head and uh, coffee cup behind you um, and some really cool stuff out there in the community. Uh, uh, thank you for all your work on uh, the Mavericks and Spurs, uh, as well as uh, CNC, uh, some fire stuff, man. Um, before we move on from that, I do want to give you one more uh, chance to plug. I think you have a another company that you uh, did merch for there that you're still involved with, First Heart Academy. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, uh, for sure. So that's something because uh, I'm I just finished grad school for physical therapy, so I got my DPT. So. My career and heart is real, like, you know, caring for people, helping people recover from injury, et cetera. Uh, 
So that's uh, Heart First Academy. It's kind of a project I've been working on over the course of the last uh, year or so. And basically bringing together a lot of the things that I'm passionate about, like caring for people, my career as a PT, and then also like uh, the love for NFTs I've found, you know, with the hobby of Top Shot, et cetera, kind of bringing all that together into one uh, with a platform that will help uh, kind of improve health literacy and like inform people about health and wellness. So a lot, I mean, I can, I could talk for a long time about it, but in short, that that's what it is trying to actually help people understand their health, understand their body. So they, they don't need to be dependent on somebody else um, and spend unnecessary money, et cetera. And very cool, man. That's a uh, uh, very noble of you and very, very uh, uh, awesome uh, to be supporting people like that. And uh, I, I saw it and wanted to give you a chance to, to bring it up there. Definitely go follow uh, First Heart Academy. Um, very yeah, we cool. We need more man. of that in our lives. For sure. Treaticus oh, always yeah. talks, King Brett, uh, uh, that the people that we're rubbing elbows with and, and collecting and connecting that we're realizing, man, there's people out there doing some really cool stuff. Noah's out there doing some really cool stuff. I, this is awesome. For sure. Appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. Um, Let's uh, jump into our first uh, 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 fun segment here of Sticky Icky Wicky. Uh, we definitely like to uh, bring up small things that we find when we're searching uh, to prepare for uh, a special guest like yourself. Uh, we're yeah. researching the Spurs and uh, looking different things up. And Wikipedia is like uh, the normal Google these days. Uh, it used to kind of be a, uh, what did you find that on Wikipedia? And now everything's on there. <laughs> Um, showing my age. Uh, so sticky, icky, wicky, we've been talking a lot about origination stories of how teams started and how they got to where they are. Uh, and I did know this coming from Dallas. Uh, my dad always talked about the ABA team that was here, the Dallas okay. Chaparrales. Um, and, uh, they had just some studs, uh, uh, playing here and we didn't really have an arena for them in the early 70s, 71, 72, the team is bouncing around to different places, played at SMU, played at uh, different arenas around Dallas, but didn't have a home court, and they were not making a lot of money, couldn't get attendance. This wasn't a consistent thing. Uh, San Antonio down there had a group of businessmen that in 1973 were they're like, we need basketball, we need a team down here, we need somebody to support. And so they leased the team from yeah. Dallas. They Great. paid – Said we'll take a three-year lease. We'll huh. rent, we'll rent the team and bring them down here to San Antonio. Okay, they play sixteen games in San Antonio and eclipsed the entire attendance from the previous year in Dallas. Huh. And mid-season of the first year of the lease, they're like, "We're buying it." We they, it. Just, they just uh, ripped up the lease and bought the team and made the San Antonio Spurs, nineteen seventy-three. Um, cool. Pretty cool. And uh, lots of stuff comes from the ABA. Uh, I learned a lot in a book called Loose Balls. If you have, take it easy, Glenn. Whoa. Uh, it's a what? pretty cool, uh, book about uh, ABA and different things that we, we got into the NBA now, the three point line that everybody kind of knows about. But the pace of play was there, uh, the dunk contest, uh, draft eligibility. There were some really cool things that we uh, inherited from the a ABA to uh, make this product that we all love right now. But Love the Dallas and San Antonio connection even more that Chaparral's uh, started the Spurs and, and you guys kept them um, 1973. What is the Chaparral? Hawaiian tra tropics. Uh, we, I, I'm going to uh, lean on my uh, uh, rural friend, King Brett, up there. What's a Chaparral? Uh, yeah, Noah, what's a Chaparral? <laughs> <laughs> like a derivative of Chaparral? <laughs> A chaper chaperone? Is it like a chaperone? No, 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 it's not. Uh, I don't. I doubt that's it. A shrub plant. plant. It's actually a plant that's if from the Southern California, Oregon. I don't that's know. Got all all Wikipedia and stuff. He's trying to do the wiki picky icky right right now. It is. It's a small plant back in like the wild wild west. You know, I think that's there. a great name for a team. See, well, you wrote like this earlier, you know, uh, in the last episode where we were talking about the origination of the Mavericks uh, name, mm. and we had a couple other choices of Wranglers and uh, Express, and you got on us. Now you're not liking our Chaparral. Chaparral, oh, let's name our team after a little plant that grows in California. Uh, yeah, tease, it's a <laughs> tease to next episode when we roast the Knickerbockers. But there you oh, go. Oh, my goodness, the Knickerbockers. Um, yeah. 
Noah, let's get back on track here. Uh, we have a game that we play every week, uh, and Glenn is going to tell you about it. It's called Loose Balls. <laughs> <laughs> Rebranding. I like yeah. it. You win, you get yeah. a ball hammock. It's called Name That Player. You know, and it's uh, we got some spurs for you. I don't know. I didn't realize you were so young, so I hope I didn't what? screw with you too bad. Everyone, nobly. Everyone you're gonna see, Glenn, is considered to be young compared to some people. Well, Noah, how old did you say you were? Twenty four. I'm twenty six. Twenty six. And also, uh, confession: I wasn't a big Spurs fan until I moved here. I, I was actually originally from Dallas. Oh, let's go! This is gonna you go traitor. terribly for you right now. You traitor! <laughs> So he's just like the Chaparral, started here in Dallas and then moved down yeah. to San Antonio and yeah, is now a uh, San tumble. Antonio Spur. Yeah. All right. Well, hopefully you can get at least one. I mean, you watch the game sometimes. You, they go back to the old players that were good on the team. Hopefully. <laughs> I, don't, I don't. I think all three are gettable. But I you, think, yeah. Uh, you know, I, I wasn't uh, too hard on you. You hey, said a couple okay. episodes yeah, ago, Glenn, right, that, okay. uh, just being in the arena that sometimes they'll bring these players up on the screen, talk about different stuff. And he said he watches yeah. highlights. We, uh, let's see. Yeah. We, at least one of these guys has a moment. So I think, I think Noah just peed a little bit on camera. <laughs> I think we all do. I don't like my odds right now. Let's start with the guy that has a moment. Let's see if we can get one to start. Name that player. It's Wim No. Yeah. Oh, uh, oh man. <laughs> Sadly, um, he dunks all over the Mavericks in his archive moment. Oh, this yeah. is going to – all my fellow Spurs fans are going to hate me now. You're exposing me for my lack of uh, historical knowledge. It's okay. We did it to King Brett last episode. To be yeah. fair, I'm top 200 on the Spurs leaderboard. I have no clue who this guy is. Uh, <laughs> no clue. Wait, so he's yeah. French, right? I, oh, uh, DL? Hey, there's hey. a – First name? Boris. Hey, Boris. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, Look at you, slow playing son of a gun. There he wasn't go. in the league that long. It was, well, what was he, like 10 years ago, nine years ago? I don't know. Yeah, no, no. I, I watched him play. Okay. I was on the, the one of the good teams, yeah. What was he on for many years, though? He wasn't on the Spurs till later in his career. He was, he he was on, on the, the Suns with, Suns. Uh, with Nat yeah. and Amari and them. The yeah. crazy thing about him is he is a – he can play all five positions. He could play point guard. He could play the five. Like he was big enough to guard the post players, but he would run the offense if you needed him to. He was really skilled. Yeah, yeah. I think in the book Loose Balls, they explain about five positions in there too. That's a different book you got. Um, <laughs> I googled it, and that one came up. It's well, not you got to wick it. You got to sticky wiki it to find out. <laughs> All right, name that player number two. Let's see if you can keep Whoa. it going. There we go. This one's gonna be a fun one. Let's see if you got it. Tim Duncan. Oh, uh, Red Rocket. Um, yeah. Ooh. And he's still around on the uh, broadcast and things, so he's still relevant. Yeah, why am I uh, – I'm so bad with that. Look at his shorts the, hiked up so high. You got the nickname. I know I had to uh, cut the show, uh, the the picture a little bit because uh, the shorts. <laughs> oh, man, I'm blanking on his name, but I, I, everybody's calling him Red Rocket. Um, <laughs> Red Rocket, that's what I call my dogs. Never yeah. mind. Easy, guys. I said uh, I think that the, it's at least half credit for getting the nickname. Point. Yeah, get give give half the name. All right, you want to give him the first name? Initials MB. Uh, MB. Uh, His first name is Matt. Matt. Um, uh, oh. Bonner. Long pause. Matt Bonner. Bonner. Yeah. Red the Rock is at Bonner. least enough for for half of a uh, uh, credit there. Uh, I like it. At he least was on the some nickname. of the championship squads, right? Yeah, yeah. He was. he was with that like OG Spurs team that I was, I grew up watching yep. before you were born. <laughs> <laughs> Boom, roasted. Uh, I think this last one uh, is connected uh, to uh, at least King Brett and I, uh, as well as you. And uh, if you watched the last episode, he came up. So. Oh. Um, if you're following C and C avidly, uh, you Britney might, might gotta get this one as well. Oh, I only watched the first half of the last episode, so Ooh. I don't think. I... Oh. oh, you traitor! <laughs> how dare you! I know who it is. I uh, I don't know this one. I can let's uh... see. How can we give? Wasn't his name like? Hold on. He coached for the Dallas Mavericks. There we go. 
obviously after he played. Was his name at the same some time. kind of like Little there's, Admiral or? There's lotion named after him, and it's the same name, the same company. <laughs> that's a. I don't know about lotions very well. <laughs> that's a they tough. Talk one. about yeah. lotion and loose balls too, by the way. So, so this is uh, uh, Avery Jurgens. Okay. No. Johnson and Johnson, <laughs> different lotion. Uh, <laughs> Avery Jurgens. Yeah, trying to make a joke. We're gonna Avery get a Johnson. sponsorship from them next. Yeah, they'll Avery be on our next Johnson. Episode. I call him the Avery Turtle. Johnson. He definitely had a nickname, though. It was like Little Something. Yeah, little or, General. No, Little General. Was that it? I That's what you said first. I'm not sure. I don't know that like one. That. He had a, he had some kind of nickname. Sometimes I say things to make you feel better, Glenicus. I appreciate you, man. Yeah, I think I'm gonna shake your hand. Middle name Dewitt. I had no idea. Whoa, Dewalt. Not. I like uh, Avery Jurgens a lot. <laughs> Avery. That's Jazz. your new nickname in CNC. <laughs> little General. You're correct. Little General. Reed? I said Little Admiral. Reed. I think I, was. I never correct. I mean, I knew he was teammates with David Robinson, hence the General. But I, I Little General. That makes sense. Yeah. I have no idea. Yeah, he was. I was hoping uh, Ginobili was going to make an appearance there. So you talk about his flopping, but I'm happy with those three. <laughs> Man, uh, it make it that easy. We've talked about that on previous episodes, uh, Noah. That just watching uh, Ginobili, Parker, uh, Duncan, Duncan, just really hard as Mavs fans early on. We had so many crazy rivalries going back and forth through the early 2000s, even the early 2010s, uh, which is weird to say. Um, <laughs> But yeah, uh, weird. talk a little bit about the rivalry and playing us in the playoffs back and forth. We've had some game sevens. We've had so many good yeah. uh, uh, playoff matchups. Um, I'm sure you got a good uh, memory or two in there as for maybe your favorite basketball memory. But just talk a little bit about maybe the team that you said you were closest to uh, for the Spurs. Yeah, for sure. I mean, and I think that era that you're talking about was like primetime basketball watching for me as a kid, like when I really fell in love with the game. Sure. Uh, it would have been like my high school, you know, early high school, late middle school years uh, when I was playing multiple hours a day, still had dreams of making it into the league and so forth. So uh, I'm still going to make it. I'm trying out every day. <laughs> every time I buy a ticket, I'm in. Yeah. Uh, well, because like I said, we uh, we were all born in Dallas. I got three brothers. So we we're all born in Dallas. So big Mass fans. Then we moved to San Antonio. So at the time, we were Mass fans during that, you know, those rivalry yeah. years. Like wow. hated the Spurs initially, but really like after being in San Antonio, you know, with that amazing team they had in those early teen years, it was kind of hard to not root for them. Hard, yeah. So it kind of became both a, a Spurs and a Mavs fan. And then, you know, then the Mavs kind of fell off and the Spurs started doing really well. So yeah, it, I, I it kind of became both. Uh, I mean, I'm a big Mavs fan too, but just because I've lived here in the city for over a decade now, it's, it's hard to not be a Spurs fan, but yeah, I mean, without a doubt, the, uh, the Mavs uh, want, I mean, to start in terms of basketball memories, we were still big Mavs fans back when the Mavs won uh, that year with Dirk. And that was probably some of the most fun basketball. Uh, to, I mean, to, to watch LeBron lose and yes. Dirk so, take it. That, I mean, take it, LeBron. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, that was great. And yeah, and just the battle between the two teams. And then even to kind of end that era with that last year with the Spurs, with Kawhi, with watching like just that. Yeah. Probably, the, I mean, I'd I'd argue maybe the best basketball team ever. Uh, I mean, I'm sure some people would debate that, but I, I've never seen seen a team with so much talent play so efficiently and just wipe wipe anybody that came against them. Yeah, so I, in terms of memory, I say just that whole era, any time between there, where teams like the Spurs and the Mavs were were beating LeBron. Yeah, yeah. dude, first game, first NBA game I ever went to was actually it's really weird connection because a diehard Dallas fan but at the time there was three year I lived in Houston so I was living in Houston but my first game ever we drove to San Antonio and watched the Spurs play huh. and I got a basketball I still have it to this day a little Spurs basketball with their like bright colors way back when and uh yeah that's the end of my story we can move on now so I noticed how easy it was for him to when he moved from Dallas just to switch his team to the Spurs. Did you guys whoa, catch whoa, that? Whoa, 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 whoa! No, no, no. <laughs> I heard it several times. I'm a diehard Mavs fan, but the San Antonio people drugged us 
and <laughs> us and made us also like the Spurs. So no one likes the Rockets, though. Is that what you're saying? Dude, he didn't no didn't move didn't move to Houston. He moved yeah. to San Antonio. We no, talked but, about that on previous episodes, Glenn. Where you move to a new place and you're yeah. a part of a new community, and everybody's part of that team, and then that team's winning. It's really hard to not, uh, f- you know, feel feel the vibes of it and, and kind of join in. It, it's but, tough to be uh, to deviate there and 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 talk mess in the middle of the city. Uh, <laughs> but it sounds like Dallas and San Antonio. There's a lot of you know, cohesion and people like both teams, but I don't hear much about the Rockets going on. That's all. Do you run into that? Uh, you live in New Jersey. You're a, a monster Knicks fan. Do you mm-hmm. run into Nets fans that question you? Does that come up? Or is I mean, it to be fair, there's like 25 Nets fans, so it's hard to run into them. Wow. In this area. Shots. Boom. Boom. Right. Boom. Needle in a haystack. Boom. Boom. No, uh, most people are Knicks fans around here. I'm sure when the Knicks were in New Jersey, when they played in New Jersey instead of Brooklyn, you know, obviously the Brooklyn Nets now, there was more people. I'm I'm about 25 minute drive over to like where Continental Air, Airlines Arena was. You know, it's near it was near Giant Stadium and all uh-huh. that. So sure. there were a lot of people that were Nets fans, especially when you had the Jason Kidd, the uh, Vince Carter teams, Richard Jefferson, and all that, from there. that group. But yes. um, yeah, it's mostly Knicks fans. It's, it's always been majority Knicks fans, even even in New Jer- in North Jersey, in South Jersey. There's actually a lot of Sixer fans because they're closer to the Philadelphia area. But, you know, Central and North Jersey, it's mostly Knicks. So. Go ahead, King Brett. I have a question. Being from Dallas, being a Spurs fan, liking multiple teams, if you had to pick one basketball memory, basketball moment that sticks out in your head, whether it's a kid or an adult, whether you make us cry or you make us laugh, what what is that? What's sticking out in your head? What popped up? When I asked that question, yeah, uh, I mean, I was thinking about it beforehand, trying to come up with one. And, and you cheater! No, yeah, I know, I know. There's really nothing that was like that one moment. Um, what about kind of, playing basketball? What? Yeah, yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. Like, okay. I think it, it, in that era, even of like when where the Mavs were good, the Spurs were good, where I kind of fell in love with basketball, kind of between watching yeah. um, Dirk to the Spurs team. I think it's kind of just that era more than I'd put it on a specific moment of like just watching really good basketball played, not in like a showy, flashy way. But I mean, because I love the game. I mean, I still love to play. So I, what was, I, I what was the first happened. game you ever went to? First NBA game you ever went to? Oh, man. I, I mean, uh, it was a, a Mavs game back when I was really young. So I, I don't. That's all that matters. Yeah, now, I was like young, young. So I, forever I young, we will stay forever young. Yeah, and it's funny. Karaoke. I mean, like I'm a big uh, basketball fan. You know, keeping up with the teams I like too. But I've always been like a. I mean, I, I, so you can say it. I don't like this, but I'm always like a. I'd rather be out playing than watching a lot of times. So. Oh, <laughs> like that. Uh, I mean, it's, we had we had a hoop in our backyard, so a lot of times I'd rather be like out shooting. Yeah, this, hooping. Shots hooping. Out. Yes, sir. So who, I, who would you I compare always, your game to? I always slack with – oh, well, my brother actually just asked me that. I'd say Ooh. it's like – I'd love to say this. This is my two favorite players. A uh, mixture of Kawhi and Steve Nash. Put into Ooh. I'd like Ooh. To That's a Steve nasty Nash. player right there. Wow. That's a nasty out here. I like you, didn't, you didn't make the NBA when you have that combo. Yeah, come on. He didn't Scrappy. want to make everyone else look bad in the NBA. That's happy on defense and can pass the ball like nobody. Like I already know what your game's like. Yeah, yeah. Crash the boards hard. Decent score. So. Yeah, and really and good at bringing it. the water bottles. Yeah, yeah. Not, <laughs> not to step on uh, uh, anyone's toes here, but I, I have a pretty special basketball memory uh, that connects all of us right now based on our conversation. Anyway, so uh, redirected Panda. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> He was so excited. Oh, look, we're out of time. No. Yeah, yeah, that's it. That's See it. you next Pick time. Um, yeah, uh, we were in the last season of Dirk's uh, uh, career, 2019, and he wouldn't announce that he was retiring. <laughs> he was just playing the games out and uh, just took a chance and, and wasn't really sure and bought tickets in San Antonio, March 10th, 2019, probably two months ahead of time. Because that was going to be the last game of the season, which would be Dirk's last game ever if he retired. Uh, turns out that that was true, and me and uh, the wife got to drive down, be in San Antonio, and see that. Uh, it, it was just incredible. I, I was crying the whole time. Uh, Dirk was just getting buckets. Uh, Popovich was super classy. Uh, great, 
Spurs fans, everything. It made me like you guys a lot more. So uh, very cool memory for me seeing Dirk's last game. Yeah, I didn't even get invited on that trip, and I knew about it two months in advance. So I was kind of upset. Way to bring that up. But it's just – it's it's hard for me to dislike the Spurs. It really is. So, yeah. you know, it's I'm that's the reason they're – number two of uh, my whole collection is Spurs. That's the second – highest leaderboard that i am on um followed by the houston rockets which is funny but Heck yeah, showing way. your te- showing your texas roots right there king brad i love it it's right grays and all um noah man this has uh, been fantastic having you on we could talk about a lot of uh, um other different things with uh, everything that we've covered there, there's so much more uh to come and, and that you've been doing but this has been great just collecting and connecting with you getting to uh spread these vibes with everybody else in the crew. Um, Glenn, uh, King Brett, you guys got anything for Noah? Loose balls? Nope. Avery oh, Jurgens. <laughs> That's what we're naming the episode. Loose yeah. balls, Avery Jurgens. That's <laughs> Dude, no, I just, ever since we first connected, like the, what all the stuff you did for the community, we're super grateful. You doing you, we appreciate you changing the world one heart at a time. Uh, it's just awesome. We're, we're pumped to have you on finally. And I'm sure it's the first of many, hopefully. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me on guys. Uh, No problem. It was great. Of course, man. Um, if you want to see this video and other places, we are on Instagram, uh, Twitter, uh, YouTube, where you're watching this, hopefully. Um, and, uh, love to see you guys at collecting and connecting.com. Um, appreciate everybody in the group. Thanks, uh, everybody, collecting and connecting. Uh, Shout out to Noah and then, of course, King Brad and Glenn. Uh, This is so much fun, guys. Really enjoying hanging out. Great. Tap that out. Tap that out. Lots of cool stuff coming. 2024. Appreciate you guys.